But maybe this will help. First of all, listen to my heart. Now, let me start the clock so that you can become accustomed to the rhythm of its beat. The yardstick. It looks normal, doesn't it? But if we could accelerate this room and everything in it to the speed of light, 186,284 miles a second, time would stand still. My heart would stop beating and I wouldn't die. The clock would cease to run. And everything would squeeze into a line, infinitely thin. Now, we can't speed the room up to the speed of light, of course. But with the magic of some very special photography, we can show you exactly what would happen if we could speed up the room to 90% of the speed of light, 167,000 miles per second. Are you ready? All right. There is our speedometer. And we're going to travel in that direction. You notice what's happening? My voice is changing. Look at the clock. This is the bar hall. We're going to accelerate vertically instead of horizontally. remain constant. The yardstick seemed the same in both directions. That's because I was accelerated along with the room. But you, as a stationary observer, were aware of the changes. Now, of course, the visual effects which you noticed were achieved in this case by the use of a Panavision lens, a variable aspect ratio lens. But the effect was exactly the same as if the room had actually been accelerated to 90% of the speed of light. These are called relativistic effects. They are based on mathematical formulas that are as common in the workaday world of the nuclear physicist as 2 times 2 equals 4 is in our world. Fantastic as they may seem, these are the formulas that gave us this. knowledge we've been discussing created a Frankenstein monster which is about to destroy us? Has science somehow become an evil thing? No. True science is a body of fact. And uh, facts are not of themselves immoral. They become good or bad merely in the use to which we put them. The discovery of nuclear energy has brought the potential of enormous benefit to mankind. At the same time, it's given man the ability to destroy himself, to wipe out civilization. Now, which will it be? Well, frankly, I don't know. But this I know. The very formulas and facts which gave man the ability to blast himself into eternity, these very facts contain powerful moral and spiritual implications which just might keep him from doing it. Now, we've considered some weird and fantastic things. But the implications to which we have just referred are the strangest and the most fantastic of all. And once again, they involve this relationship between time and space. 
Would you like to see with your own eyes a million years into the past and see it in the present as though it were right now? Well, you can. Tonight, take a little drive out into the country away from the city lights. If the night is clear and if your eyesight is good, you will be able to see in the constellation of Andromeda a faint, hazy object. It's called the Andromeda Nebula. It's actually another universe, another galactic system, over a million light years out in space. While you're looking, remember this. The light reaching your eye tonight left that distant universe over a million years ago, and it has been traveling like a wailing banshee through space ever since. You're looking more than a million years into the past and seeing it as now. Where the nebula in Andromeda is, or how it looks right now, we can't know for sure. For all we know, it may not even exist. All we can know is how it looked over a million years ago. Now, of course, it isn't necessary to go this far into space to encounter the same principle. Every day as you look up at the sun, you're looking eight and a quarter minutes into the past for the sun is eight and a quarter light minutes away from the earth. Also at night, when you look up at Antares, you're seeing 250 years ago, just as though it were right now. From time to time, the newspapers report the discovery of a nova, or a supernova, a star that bursts into flame like a giant hydrogen bomb. Any astronomer knows that what we see as now actually happened hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Now, all of this is illustration of the fact that time and space are linked together. But what does this have to do with virality? Well, in the world today, wherever man accepts the concept of a supreme being or a creator of the universe, there are at least three points of general agreement. First, that God is omnipotent. That is, he is all-powerful. Well, he'd have to be to create the universe. Then he is omniscient. That is, he is all-knowing. And he is omnipresent. That is, he is present or existent everywhere at once. Do you realize what this means? If time and space are inseparably linked together, then a God who is not limited in space cannot be limited by time. If to him every point in space is here, then every moment of time is now. Let's think for a moment about what this means. Let's say that uh, you were not limited in space. If you were on the star Rigel looking back to the Earth, Joan of Arc would just now be rallying the people of France. On Betelgeuse, John Bunyan would be writing Pilgrim's Progress. And on the star Canopus, the gallant 600 would be charging half a league, half a league, half a league onward. And if you were on the star Sirius, you could see what you were doing nine years ago, because you're still doing it. Gives you something to think about, doesn't it? You know, it's an important thing for us to recognize the possibility that every act, good or bad, lives on and on that we are forever accountable for our actions. But responsibility is the stuff of which character is made. And accepting a full measure of responsibility is the highest challenge before any young person today. Mm -hmm.